Welcome to the Toolhound 6 printing video. Uh, in this video I'm going to take you through a variety of different ways that you're able to print from within the Toolhound application. Uh, the first way we're going to look at is to print lists in Toolhound. And we're going to start by going to the inventory function and then pull up our manufacturers list. The print icon is located as the leftmost button on the icon toolbar in the top right hand corner of the page. When you click on the print button, Toolhound will generate your PDF report and then you will simply click on the print button and then print your PDF form and out it'll come. Right. Now this can be done for any of the forms within Toolhound. Uh, any, of the, any of the lists that you're going to find, you can use this function to print them out. Okay, so let's move to the next part. Okay. There are several forms, uh, including purchase orders, that you're able to print directly from the form. I'm going to pull up a purchase order on the screen. Let's go with number 76 for the Montreal Olympics. This is my form for my purchase order. And again, leftmost icon on the icon toolbar is the print button. And this is what your purchase order printing looks like. You have your vendor, your ship to and all your detail information on the form. So the standard rule of thumb is if you can see the print icon on the left hand side of the icon toolbar you'll be able to print directly from that form. Okay let's close this screen down. Unlike Toolhound 5, Toolhound 6's reports are all contained in the Reports section, which is located at the bottom of the menu on the left-hand side of the page. So when you click on that, you'll get displayed the reporting page, which has your favorites at the top, followed by the different uh, functions in Toolhound, which correspond directly to the functions on the left-hand side in the menu. So if you're looking for transaction reports, they'll be under the transaction section, personnel reports under the personnel section. Okay. Now, in order to favorite one of your reports, um, you simply click on the report. So I just opened up the transactions report. If I wanted to favorite the issues report, I would simply click on it. And then up here on the top right hand side, I could click the favorites button. And that toggles the favorite on, which means the issues report now uh, is into my favorites section at the very top. Okay, so let's take a look at this screen on the right hand side. Um, you have four different icons, um, they correspond to the icons that are to the left of the report name. Okay, so if you see the small briefcase, it means it's a system report. Um, the icon of a person's head is means that the report is private, so only the user who creates the report will be able to view that report. An icon of the globe is a public report, which, me, which means every, anybody has access to it, and uh, an icon that has a heart means that it's a favorited report. Okay. To display report details on the right hand side, simply click on the report you wish to see information about and it'll display information. So I'll click on the inventory list and it gives me the name and description visibility for that report where it can be seen within the organization, created date, etc. Okay. So let's take a look at what we can do with our reports. So in order to run a report you can either select the report and click the print button 
or you can double click on the report and it'll open up the report filters page. Okay. There's three different tabs here. There's filter, advanced filter, and email. Uh, on the quick filter page, you have um, standard filters that are easy to fill in. Okay. The advanced filters allows you to filter um, much more uh, advanced. <laughs> Big surprise. And you have the ability to email out your uh, report. Also on the report filters page in the top right hand corner, you have four icons. First one is to view the report. The second one is to email your report out. The third is to export out to a PDF document. And the last icon is to export the report out to Excel. Okay. For our purposes, I'm just going to run this report just by clicking on the view report. Here's our report. We can move from page to page within the report or back to the first page or to the last page. We can also print the report by clicking on the print icon. Okay. Um, or if I enter in a filter, it restricts the information coming back. So same report, but I only want it for one particular person. I view the report again. And only this one person's information comes. Now let's take a look at actually exporting this out. Um, actually, we'll start with emailing. So in order to email, we go to the email tab. We choose the attachment type for the report, whether it's Excel or PDF. I'm going to choose PDF. Enter the recipient. Click on the plus. And then we click on the email icon in the top right hand corner. And the Toolhound application tells me that the email was sent successfully. Now, the documents arrived in my email, so I'm going to go and get it. I will double click on the icon, and here is the report. Okay. Arguably, the biggest change in Toolhound 6 reporting allows the user to duplicate reports and then make modifications to the duplicates. So in order to duplicate a report, you simply select the report and then you click on the duplicate key, the duplicate icon on the top right hand corner, and it'll provide you with a copy. Now once you have that copy, you click on the copy and then you can click on the edit report icon. This brings you up to the first report edit screen where it gives you the name which you can change. And on this screen you can also put in a description of the report and it puts in the report category, the report type, Okay, and there are pull downs for different types, the orientation, portrait or landscape, and the tabular style and whether it's a private report or not. The one thing that you must set is the visibility. So if you click on the pull down for visibility, you select your visibility and then save. Now let's move to the next part, which is the uh, modifying of the data coming back. So what you have here is a picture of um, so parts of the tables that are involved with the reporting type. And you have your field selection. Okay. So there's depending on the report type, you'll prov be provided with different 
tables and field types. You also have the ability to do filtering within your report, which I'll come back to in a minute, and the ability to modify your layout. Now I'm going to just run this report and click on the view report to display and this is what the report currently looks like. I'd like to note the warranty total life field user fields 2 and 3 are in the report. We're going to go back to the report to the columns. I'm going to remove total life warranty and the two user fields and save the report and then we're going to go and look at the report again and as you can see those fields have been removed from the report back to the report again and we can move to the layout and I'm going to move price per unit actually I'll move it over to the end okay you can see the fields popping up so if I drop it here it'll put average cost between and as you move across say we put it right after model and then we get rid of this so now we have two lines in the heading save this and then we print and view and now we have only two lines for the headings and only two lines for each record that are being displayed. Toolhound users also have the ability to create their own reports. Uh, to create a new report, simply uh, from the reports page, click the create report button. And now you can enter in a name for your report. And then you select your report category. The report categories are transactions, inventory, locations, personnel, purchasing, service, internal and external rental, and utilities. I'm going to select inventory and then from the pull down list for the report type, inventory with ID. I'm going to leave the orientation as portrait, select my visibility. and select my report style as tabular. From here I move to the columns and I select the columns that I want to select. Part number and description and the inventory ID and the inventory type. And I can move on to my filtering and in the filtering area I'm going to just select serialized items. So I move down to the inventory type section, choose serialized, and from the comparison operators I use is true and select runtime. And then I'm going to save my report. Now that I've saved the report, it appears in my list of reports and I can run it and view the report.